Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of Oregon Kluger and Quinn's podcast, Firm Thinking. As we talked at the outset of this podcast, um, one of the subjects that we wanted to talk about was children's safety. And it's a subject that's very near and dear um, to those of us at the firm, given the fact that we do have a charitable organization, um, HKQ Kids, where our mission is essentially um, focused on um, promoting public awareness of issues affecting the safety of children in the Northeastern Pennsylvania area. And part of the way that we do this is by, you know, reaching out to the public and, and, and talking about issues that we see, um, you know, affecting children locally and looking at ways to give parents tips how to keep their children safe. And one of the things, if you follow this podcast or follow our HKQ Kids Facebook page, one of the things you'll notice is that around the holiday season every year, we normally publish um, a report from the US um, Public Interest Research Group um, called Trouble in Toyland. And that article outlines some recalled toys and some tips for parents when they're looking for toys during the holiday season, what to watch out for, um, what to be cautious of and so forth. So we wanted to talk about that with all of you today, given the fact that we are you know, immersed in the holiday season and people are shopping. Some of us may not have started our shopping yet, but um, we're in the process of it. So we thought who else is better to join us to talk about this subject other than our friend, Amy Flaherty, who is not only a fantastic physician assistant mm -hmm. at Pediatric Associates of Kingston, but also an amazing mother of two amazing children. So without further um, delay, I wanna introduce you all to Amy Flaherty. Hi, Amy. Hi, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We're so happy to have you with us. Can you just kind of give us a little bit more um, information about yourself and your background? Sure. So as you said, my name's Amy Flaherty. I'm a physician assistant um, at Pat Pediatrics, which is just neighbor to you. Um, I grew up uh, here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I graduated from Holy Redeemer and then went on to King's College to get my uh, master's in physician assistant studies. I have now worked at PAC Pediatrics for five and a half years, which is crazy, time flies by. Um, so it's really nice to now continue to um, be in Northeastern Pennsylvania, serve the children of Northeastern Pennsylvania and also raise two of my own children here too. And your children are the cutest. I know my daughter Charlotte and your daughter Reagan are in a music class together. Yeah. And we're patients of Amy. And I know you probably <laughs> hate, uh, dreaded giving, your, giving me your cell phone number because I text you all the time about questions. No, I, I always say these uh, the text messages and messages I get get me through through now nighttime feedings with the baby and <laughs> <laughs> there's never downtime, which is a good thing. It takes my mind off my own kids a little bit. So it's a good thing. <laughs> we appreciate all that you do. That's for sure. Uh, you know, I am always here. <laughs> so getting to this article, um, Trouble in Toyland, mm -hmm. and actually this is um, the, the fifth year that they have published this art or not the fifth, I think it's the 35th year actually that they've done this. They've been doing this yep. for a long time. And um, and they talk about some toys, they talk about some recalled toys, they talk about some toys they be careful about, you know, that may sure. be appropriate for some kids and, mm -hmm. and not others. I mean, in your practice, you know, do you see around the holiday season or after the holidays, do you see, you know, parents calling you, you know, with issues with kids and getting into toys or, you know, maybe even eating things that they shouldn't be after? Yeah, after sure. Of course, yeah, and unfortunately, it's not just, of course, you see it more around the holidays, but since they're playing with these toys all year round, it's something that we need to keep in our mind, back of our minds throughout the entire year, too. Um, we get phone calls that, and fortunately, at, in the outpatient setting, we aren't getting even so many emergent phone calls that, you know, we see them in the office and we need to get them right to the emergency department that they're choking, but we see minor injuries too, that kids are putting small parts in ears up their nose, um, small parts that they are swallowing, which luckily aren't causing, you know, choking issues at home, but, you know, calls to get x-rays to make sure that the object is moving through the digestive tract as it should and not causing any major issues too. So it's interesting, one of, a couple of the toys that they mentioned as recalled toys 
fortunately, I personally haven't seen these on the market, which is probably a good thing. Good, right. <laughs> but just so, you know, our viewers and our listeners know, and when just, we will be posting this on our website, hkqkids.org. We'll be posting it on Facebook. So if anybody wants to read this article, we'll definitely have a post out there so you can look at it. But one of the, um, one of the products that I was surprised about was the Power Wheels Barbie Dream Can Camper. Um, yeah. that was recalled in this article because it's essentially the foot pedal could pedal stick yeah. and they could get into a, the child operating the vehicle could get into a crash. Sure. Uh, you would never think in a uh, kid's car that you would have to worry about car accidents, but they could happen at any point of life, I guess, no matter if it's a real car or a play car too. <laughs> that's right. So, I mean, and, and that's too bad because that camper, if you look on this, this, this um um this publication it does look pretty interesting but it's also very expensive so. i was just going to say and they're not inexpensive either so i think it's something that we need to remember to always have like even in those we always stress bicycle scooters to wear helmets but it sounds like with some of these motorized um i mean they're not only the camper they have uh, motorized like side by sides, um, play quads in that, that it's important to have a helmet on at all times wearing, you know, playing with those too. Absolutely. And I know it goes without saying, but obviously when, when kids are operating these types of, you know, these motor vehicles for children, you know, it should always be done with a parent present just in case, you know, and I know the kids love them. They want to get out there and, and, and drive them all the time, but it's just something they have to be mindful of when they're, when they're on them. Absolutely. And away from, you know, the real road too. that, God forbid, it did get stuck and they lost control of that, you know, mom and dad are right there, but also not too close to a road as well. And then another thing that I thought was interesting, obviously, you know, we've heard for years about lead and lead mm -hmm. being paid and on certain children's toys. And I was really surprised to see that one toy, um, a six um, inch promotional Aflac doctor duck was actually recalled back in August because the buttons right. on the toy contained lead levels that exceeded the mm -hmm. federal standard. So, you know, even though lead, I guess, you know, you would think that's an issue of the past in terms of that being put on children's toys. It's something you still have to be, have to worry about. Absolutely. And in pediatrics, we actually screen lead levels, um, both at nine months. Um, we want it done before the uh, children are a year old. And also again, at 18 months before a child is two years old, um, we screen. In the past, um, a passing lead level um, in a blood test used to be less than um, 10 micrograms per deciliter. Now we actually want it less than five micrograms uh, per deciliter. And the reason being is if we could catch it in these young kids um, at kind of that borderline level, um, it reduces the chances, you know, you see with elevated lead levels that it could ca actually cause um, lower IQ numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so by catching it younger, um, we see, you know, it works to both uh, the kids' advantage and parents' advantage, too. And what do you do, you know, if you see a child with an elevated lead level, what is, you know, the, the, the treatment plan? So it really depends on the value um, that you get once you get your lead level back. Um, a lot of it's taken care of through the Department of Health, though. So all we actually now do lead screenings in our office. They used to be um, done, like, at an outside lab. Um, but we're able to do them in the office, um, and those levels get uh, actually reported to the Department of Health regularly. Um, and then they kind of sometimes it needs to be repeated in three months. Um, other times they need, you know, an x ray of the belly because, you know, they might be at grandma's house that lives in an older house um, and they have lead paint. We've had patients that um, actually were eating lead chips. Um, from the paint. So you could see it in um, all different ways, but it really depends on the level. Um, and then th the Department of Health really gives us, you know, the next steps. But a lot of times it's monitoring. We haven't seen, you know, with recalls that they have now um, with paint without lead in it, um, elevated lead levels are not super common. Um, so a lot of times it's just monitoring to make sure they're not going up. Um, and a lot of times the Department of Health, too, will go into the house to evaluate um, to, you know, see if they could find the root that's causing um, the elevated lead level as well. That's good. And it's great yeah. that you're able to monitor that in the office for sure. Yeah, it's really important. So just getting going through this list, um, just so everyone is aware, another thing that was interesting was and something to be mindful of was this step to Little Helpers Children's Grocery Cart that was recalled back in February of this year because they received 22 reports of the basket 
breaking, breaking. and it could break into these sharp pieces that mm -hmm. could actually pose a laceration hazard. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I was reading up to it, it just, um, you know, the AAP, which is the American Academy of Pediatrics, um, always recommends to buy toys that are sturdy plastic, um, because if they're not sturdy plastic, like you said, they could break into small pieces causing lacerations, um, which are a cut which may uh, require stitches, may require staples. Um, but also, too, those small pieces then could become a choking hazard as well. So could kind of be both things. <laughs> For sure. And one thing that I found so interesting, because I never thought about this until reading this article, was that the film they said that you put on over the mirrors on certain, you know, even there was a jumper room for an infant that had, you know, a film over the mirror that the baby looks into, that a right. child can ingest that and choke on that. I was so right. shocked by that. I know. Even as a mom, to be honest with you, that was not something that I would even think of. I think sometimes we even keep them on a little bit longer just so we don't screw after it gets, you know, drool all over it and all messy. But um, yeah, that was not something that crossed my mind. I was really interested. Uh, it was interesting to read that as well. Yeah, I was very shocked by that. We do the same thing. <laughs> and, 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 you know, another thing that, that's really interesting and it actually just happened to us this weekend, Charlotte, my daughter will be two on Friday oh. and she is- That went by really fast. I know, I know. And she's quite the handful and it's funny, so she, we got these markers because she loves to draw places she shouldn't now, including the walls. So we got these special markers that they only work on the paper that they go with. Mm -hmm. So I find out, I see her and it's like a split second goes by, I look over and she has the marker in her mouth and she bit off the tip of three different markers. <laughs> and I was, you know, totally freaked out. Didn't have to text you because I found all three of the tips, thank God, or I would have texted you, Amy. But um, <laughs> but I was thinking, oh my gosh, I never even thought of this because, you know, as this article explains, when it comes to paints and markers and, mm -hmm. and you know, those types of things, you don't need, there's no choking hazards noted on the warning on, on the labels of the, of the products because, you know, that, that they don't qualify for it. There's no technical small parts, but you really have to be careful because something like my daughter, what my daughter did could happen and then you could be in a pickle. <laughs> Or you'll be amazed what you could find in your children's poop then after, because a lot of times they're eating, you know, the small pieces of crayons, which, are, you know, a lot of, you know, you don't even know, you, like you said, you turn your back for a second and it's not something they'll necessarily choke on, but then, you know, you're changing a diaper a day or two later and there's the tip of the crayon that you're looking for too. <laughs> in terms of these crayons, you know, Crayola, um, the crayons, the markers, I mean, are though, do you have to be worried about if your child does ingest something like that, you know, do you have to be worried about poisoning of, of some sort or do you just let that pass, as you said, through the system? You no, know, most of them are non-toxic. So, um, you know, if they did get, now if they ingested a whole pack of markers or, you know, multiple crayons, um, we may, you know, call poison control, but I really don't, you know, a lot of them, like I said, are non-toxic that you wouldn't have to worry about something like that. Oh, it's always sounds a day. Like, sounds like you need trouble. to start feeding Charlotte more. Like, was she hungry? <laughs> no, I, I think she's getting her two-year-old more molars. I think that's it. <laughs> she eats a lot, Amy. I don't, I don't know what it is. She's also sleep regressing too now. So we're, yeah. we have a lot of things going on in the household. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> it doesn't. It for sure doesn't. So I only have one child, but obviously you have Reagan and Adrian now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this article notes and you have to be careful like now, I guess, you know, in terms of toys that are age appropriate for Reagan, but may mm -hmm. not be for Adrian, right? So, you know, talk to us about that and what we should be, what you should be, you know, mindful of if you have two kids that are of different ages. Sh Sure, and I, I we talk about this a lot um, with our patients too. Um, now that a, a, or Reagan has her toys scattered literally all over our floor. Um, Adrian's not on the move yet, but as he starts crawling um, and rolling around, it's very easy for Adrian then to pick up a small toy um, that may be appropriate for Reagan or a uh, accessory to a toy that she has to put in his mouth and then choke. So um, it's a lot of safe, you know, uh, supervising the kids and trying to do or, you know, sometimes making little designated um, play areas for Reagan and for Adrian once he is um, moving around to try and prevent him from getting into the small um, accessories or pieces of 
from toys that Reagan has, or even like you said, crayons, markers, those kinds of things. Um, there's also, you know, some baby gates to do that you could use to kind of let, you know, when Adrian is a little bit more on the move um, to kind of keep him in one area and allow still allow uh, Reagan to um, have the space that she has because unfortunately she still thinks she rules this house. So we have to keep her, her area not too uh, dis disrupted at all, but it is really important once, uh, you know, baby number two comes comes and you do have another young one at home to try and supervise a lot. I know even Reagan now is trying, you know, she has pretend spoons and forks and trying to uh, feed Adrian. Um, uh, and it's, you know, a learning curve for her too. And I think it's a lot of positive reinforcement to it. You know, it's really nice of you to think of uh, feeding your brother, but right now he's only taking bottles. So we don't want anything else in his mouth too, to kind of try and instill it as uh, as early as we could. <laughs> well, you know, we're obviously in this stage with our, you know, young children worrying about choking, but, you know, as the, they get older, there's even more things to worry about, as, you know, this Trouble in Toyland article points out. I wasn't, I, I wasn't even thinking of these things, but as kids, you know, age and they start using in, um, like in phone apps yeah. to buy games that they you have to be mindful of um you know them purchasing <laughs> i was not aware of this at all i was when i was reading like the option to spend what was it like 99 dollars on to make the game faster <laughs> yes. i wasn't either i mean it's shocking but i guess you know to get to certain levels or get extra you know whatever power-ups or whatever they're called in these in these these games on you know the phone apps that they could be spending all this money and of course at the same time you have to be worried about you know you know credit your credit card and the like, data breaches mm -hmm. so you know obviously every parent knows to monitor what their child is doing you know on the phone or on their ipad or on the internet but right. just these little extra extra yeah, tips absolutely. And trying to pass on yeah, and setting, you know, parental passwords too um, that they need in order to do these things and um, parental controls too. I know in it, it was even, you know, leading into like the video games and that kind of stuff that that way the parent is able to see chats and those kinds of things too. So we will definitely post, like I said, on Facebook and on our website, um, this article for all of you to read. Um, but, you know, while we have Amy and with everything going on, you know, with the COVID, with the holidays, you know, what other, you know, what other thing, what other do you, things that you see going on with children um, during this time? And what other tips do you have for our listeners and for our viewers, you know, to keep kids safe at this time? Sure. So I, I'm, of course, um, COVID is top on all of our minds. Um, obviously, the recommendations now are really just keeping holiday celebrations to one household. Um, but even with doing that, there's a lot of way to still make the holiday special for kids. Um, so doing fun activities at home, um, lots of arts and crafts. I know we've gotten into our arts and craft cabinet quite a bit this uh, holiday season already. Um, taking special time out to decorate the house, get ready. I don't want to skip Thanksgiving, um, but also Christmas isn't too far after um, that we started, you know, making it special, decorating um, for the Christmas as well. Um, as far as a lot of questions that we get in pediatrics, even aside from, you know, keeping the kids healthy through the holiday season, making sure we're hand washing even without COVID, you know, um, young babies under four months old, don't pass them around from family member to family member, um, especially because they don't have, you know, the start of, they're just starting their immunizations. Um, but also it's important to keep the kids on a routine as crazy as the holidays could get. Um, and you don't want to be so strict and rigid, some flexibility with schedules, but do try and keep them on their normal schedules throughout the day, their napping or sleeping schedules, um, that will prevent tantrums. Um, it may prevent some sleep regressions following the holidays as well. Um, also throughout the holidays, it's snacking, snacking. My daughter wakes up in the morning asking for candy. Um, so it's trying to um, make healthier decisions, You know, maybe some fruit instead of candy through the holidays as a special treat. Um, and always remembering portion control through the holidays too. So, you know, with many schools now, given the significant increase in cases that we're experiencing, you know, in our county and others, 
um, and the transition of schools to virtual learning, what if any psychological effects have you seen on school aged children um, that no longer have, you know, in person instruction? Yeah, so it's a strain mentally, both on kids and parents, I think. Um, kids aren't getting out, they aren't being able to, um, you know, do sports, but, you know, sports are, I know they're wearing masks and taking precautions, but, you know, fall sports that didn't take place, um, you know, that's a good way to re alleviate stress in, um, in adults and kids, um, that you see a lot more kids with anxiety, you see them with depression. As parents were anxious, you know, about everything going on, and kids are sponges they pick up on the anxiety that we feel as well um i think it's important to be open with your children and you know be there for them to talk to plan fun things you know that you could do around the house play games um watch a you know a movie um and do make it important it's important to uh, make it about the kids too that you plan these special nights together since they aren't getting out with their friends that's so important and you know keeping them on a schedule that also includes, you know, fun things to look forward to. I think that's, you know, what all of us need right now <laughs> during this difficult time. Yeah, but and you just mentioned it too. I do think it is important, even though, you know, their virtual learning, um, don't let the, you know, stay up till two o'clock in the morning because they don't necessarily have school tomorrow. Um, um, and, you know, let them sleep till 12, one o'clock the next day. Um, believe it or not, sleep deprivation could lead um, to depression um, and depressive thoughts and feeling down that if we could still stay in that routine, um, it really helps us both mentally and physically. For sure. I know it helps me when I stick to my routine because when I go off the, off the rails, things aren't good. <laughs> so when, when Charlotte decides to sleep regress, then we have some issues. <laughs> Which is happening right now, Amy, but that's that'll be something I'll text you about later because <laughs> what to do but um you know we're working through it mm -hmm. but well you know i just want to say thank you so much for joining us um mm -hmm. your insight and, and the knowledge that you could pass on to us was just so helpful and it was great speaking to you and, and hopefully helping some parents out there make decisions about you know the toys that they're going to be purchasing their kids over the holidays so thank you again and yes. i hope thank to see you soon Yes, thank you so much. I will see you soon. Hopefully, I, I always say I love to see patients in the office, but I really like to see them outside the office too, just to bump into them. So we'll see you soon at music class and have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. And I just want to remind all of our viewers and listeners that our HKQ holiday movie is coming up. Um, we can't do it at the Kirby this year, but we will be hosting a free holiday movie events at the garden drive-in on december 12th um so we hope your families can come the movies you have a, a, one of two options you can watch the polar express or elf the key is though you do have to register so you have to go online and register um because you will not be able to um you know get in without be, being pre-registered so you can check out our facebook page um horgan kluger and quinn hkq kids all the information is on our website, hkqlaw.com. So you can check that um, the information out on there and we hope to see you on December 12th. But once again, thank you, Amy, for joining us and we'll see you next time on Firm Thinking. Thanks.